I have to say, you know what the best news of the night is? That the best speaker we've heard from was one of the finalists. And I had the privilege and the honor to meet all the finalists. And all I can say is one is just more impressive than the next. And we heard from Rachel, but there's 40 of them out there. And that should all give us a lot of hope for the future. I also want to tell Len, I didn't realize how devastated he was. It's not so bad being a semifinalist. He really should be very proud of that. He really should be. Not everybody can be a finalist. Now, the biggest, though, eye-awakening insight I got from Len's talk is I didn't realize that I was only a very small cog in Len's incredibly convoluted 50-year plan <laughs> to get into this room where it all happens. Luckily, our finalists, they don't have to worry about coming up with something like that since they've already done it the old-fashioned way. They earned their way here by doing amazing science and being the best of the best. Now, I love Len. He's been the greatest partner for 30 years, and I'm glad that his plan also got me back here in this room. Uh, but I thought that there was a lot of wisdom and take-home messages in his little talk. But for any of you who know me and Len, we always have to debate some things, maybe lots of things. And there are two of his points that I just heard that I really have to take big issue with. All right, first of all, on his advice to those incredible superheroes, our finalists, who are our future, about not taking on the impossible, sorry, Len, that's why you're not a finalist. <laughs> that's exactly what I want, we want, and most importantly, they want to do. You guys heard one of the great quotes from one of the two Ayushas, sorry, I don't remember the last name, where he quoted Nelson Mandela. And what did he say? We think so many things, people think so many things are impossible until somebody goes out and does it. And that's why these kids are finalists. And that's why I think uh, we have so much hope for the future. So um, now I can go back on script. Maybe you can roll it, Dan. OK. Now. Um, Oh yeah, the second point, before I get on, the second point that I wanted to bring up, which was that better than anyone, I really do know what got Len Schleifer into this room, okay? And I hope none of you guys bought this convoluted and devious 50-year plan approach that he just told you. But instead, I know Len Schleifer because I've been watching more carefully than anybody in the last 30 years. And how he got into this room was by focusing on one single, simple principle that he learned from his father. That you should live your life by being true to the concept of doing well by doing good. And by watching him so carefully over the last 30 years, I can say that the way he got here was by living up to his father's guidance and also the concept that if you remain devoted to the truth and science and everything you do, you can do a whole lot of good. And that's why I joined with Len over 30 years ago, and that's why I'm still by his side today. All right, now going back on script, I do want to briefly mention some of the good that we do at Regeneron. Together with our incredible team of scientists and colleagues, many of whom are here celebrating the finalists, we've invented medicines for many serious diseases facing mankind, including, for example, the leading medicine to fight the major causes of blindness in America, the first genetic-based treatment to prevent heart disease, new immuno-oncology cancer treatments, and an entirely new treatment for asthma, atopic diseases, and other allergic diseases. And we're very proud of all that. But we're counting on a whole lot more from this generation of 40 finalists. Because as Len said, they have special powers. And the world needs them to use their powers for good more than ever before due to all the challenges facing our environment and our health and our planet. And I really hope that this STS experience really helps these kids realize their potential. I know it did it for me. 
I lived this. Being one of these kids back in 1976 meant everything to me. It showed me that a poor Greek immigrant kid from Queens might actually be able to make something of a life in science. Perhaps most importantly, it gave me the confidence to dream that I could actually matter. It gave me the confidence to believe that if I worked hard, science could help people. My science could help people. None of this would have happened without the Science Talent Search. But none of this would have happened without my high school science teachers, Mrs. Strom and Mr. Schmuckler. I only wish they could be here. And none of this would have happened without my immigrant parents, my grandparents, those who pushed me to be all I could be. So echoing what Rachel said, I'd like to get all the parents, the mentors, the science teachers, I think they should all stand up and we should all celebrate and honor them because they are the people who got the finalists here. Tonight is also about you. To the parents, the grandparents, the teachers, the mentors, tonight is also about you and your investment and your hard work in getting these very special kids to where they are today. Now, the conversation around science and STEM education in the United States has really evolved in recent years to focus on equity and ensuring a broader base of students are exposed to science. And this is good for so many reasons that I'm sure I don't have to elaborate. It helps even the playing fields for American kids and gets more kids into the fields that we really need to be competitive in the world to deal with all of our problems. However, with all this discussion about opportunity, I worry that at times the pendulum has swung a little bit too far. And in the process, we neglect the equally important celebration and nurturing of the best of the best, of America's top scientific talent. If you're a prodigy in singing or dancing, you get celebrated on America's Got Talent. That's great, but I don't think anybody should be more celebrated or recognized than the incredible science superheroes that we are honoring tonight. Because ultimately, who is going to make a bigger impact on the future of society? Truly brilliant and like people, young people who are like those who are the finalists here today, who are so rare and so special and should be cultivated and treasured like our most precious of national resources. I have to note something else about these kids that I think is incredible and speaks to the greatness of this country. Like me, like Maya, 80% of the finalists came from immigrant families. And most of them did not grow up with privilege. Instead, together with the help of their parents and their grandparents and their mentors and their teachers, together with their incredible drive and perseverance and also their very special God-given talent and their incredible minds, they put themselves on this stage today. I really believe that we need to recognize and do all we can to help the really exceptional students achieve their destinies because their destinies are what we need to save our world. Their contributions in the future may make air travel safer. They may address the scourge of climate change. They may offer hope against unchecked epidemics of Alzheimer's, diabetes, and cancer. But they can't make these incredible breakthroughs without support. We need to make sure that the true scientific prodigies are identified at early ages. We need to surround them with dedicated support through every step of the process. We need to celebrate their successes. We need to elevate them as the real heroes of our world and our society. And that's one of the main reasons we support the Science Talent Search. We think this program is a national treasure because it tells the best and the brightest that they can do it. Let me be clear, though, that while we recognize that we need to reach more children and to level the playing field, and in fact, a lot of our $100 million contribution to the society is dedicated, 30 million of it, to try to promote outreach programs and equity programs that target high schools that have never had a competitor in this program. I'd like to leave you with the story that, for me, brings us all home. Two years ago at this event, I was reintroduced to Don Harless. I'm sure many of you don't know who Don Harless is, but you all know who Maya is. Well, Don used to be Maya as the head of the STS when I participated in 1976. When he came here two years ago, Don was in his late 80s, and he wasn't used to making big trips. But that year, he especially wanted to come to the STS which was the first year that Regeneron was acting as sponsor. 
You see, Don was losing his vision due to macular degeneration. But his sight was saved when he was given a medicine that we invented at Regeneron, known as ILEA. Don wanted to personally thank the kid that he had awarded a prize, that he had handed a prize to in 1976, who had given him back his sight almost 40 years later. An incredible story of coming full circle. I can only hope that some of the finalists do something that might help us out in about 40 years. OK, so, so to all the finalists, I want to tell you, I want you all to ultimately have your own Don Harless moment. Because there is no success or achievement that is quite like hearing from a person whose life that you have actually done something for that meaningfully improved or changed their life. And to the rest of the world, let's not forget the most gifted and talented young people. Let's make sure that we give them their due, because these are the people who will save our world. Thank you all for being here and supporting these amazing kids, and let's get on with it. Thank you.